Get out the way, who got a watch, who got the time, I'm raising the clock Even in my feelings, grind don't stop, got big dreams, want big rocks I got plans, who got talk, that is real cheap, but it's really gold cost I'm trying to get these ends, building bios with my friends I'm about handling my business, no time for stress over bullshit You think success is an option, I'm trying to get this shit popping like woo. Big moves, my rules Y'all heavy on the tweeting I'll disappear a whole season like woo. Who said they looking for me? I'm a make Hey D Marie TV family So everything I say is alleged It's in my opinion And it is for entertainment purposes only Today we'll be reviewing Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 6 episode 30 Houston we have a kiki So this episode picks up When they're doing the team building exercises And they're working um they're beginning to get together the trust fall exercise so this is where they pair people together and they you are supposed to trust that the person that you're following back towards is going to catch you and it's a trust exercise and so they're putting together people who they say have some trust issues the first person they put together is Letitia and Stormy and Tisha was afraid to fall back and she didn't trust that Stormy was going to catch her but then Nell decides to put Martell and Melody together. Now, my concern with this is Nell and everybody there is aware that there's an issue between Melody and Martell with regards to Revenge P. This is an issue that is actively happening at the time that this is being filmed. Melody also had a conversation with Nell and Chris Fletcher, letting them know that she did not want to be paired with Martell and exercises. She communicated this so effectively. She was straight, she was to the point, she gave them reasons why, and they agreed not to do that. And the first opportunity given, this is what they do. So I'm not sure if this was a decision strictly by Nell and Chris or Nell herself or if production wanted this to come together. But what it shows is a lack of protection and respect for Melody. She asked them to do one thing and they did something else. It's that this woman's needs and what she wants is never a consideration on this show. What they want is a shot and a particular storyline. And they're willing to jeopardize Mel at any given time to get it. And I don't know why this is okay. It's been happening since season one. But they pair Mel and Martell together. Mel is supposed to trust to fall into Martell's arms and he'll catch her. Now, why would she trust that? This man has never protected her. He's never been there to catch her. He has destroyed his family. He has shown over and over again that he is not a solid person that she can trust and depend on. So no, she's not going to fall back into his arms thinking he's going to catch her. He never catches her. He's always left her vulnerable and to fall. That's why they're no longer together. So she literally just laid on the floor on her own because in her words, she would trust the floor more than she trusts Martell, and I 100% agree with that. It was not only her showing the group that she does not have any trust in this man and that their relationship is severed and it's broken, but it's also reinforcing that I've asked you not to pair us together, so I'm not gonna give you guys what you're asking for. That can't happen here. There was a lot of people that she could be paired with. She could have been paired with Stormy. She could have been paired with Tisha. She could have been paired with Kimmy, Marceau, Maurice. She has trust issues with everyone in that room besides the Fletchers at this moment. So she could have been paired with anyone. Martel could have been paired with Marceau, Maurice, Miss Fletcher. They have issues that they're working on themselves. So why is it that you pair Mel and Martel together? They're not a couple. They're not actively working to do anything together because they're in the midst of a parent custody fight amongst each other. Martell is the person who filed those charges to try to get her children taken away. And then he shared a revenge porn tape with not only his mistress at the time, but also multiple people it looks like on this show. And they're aware that there's an issue regarding that when she comes here. So I just find the constant disrespect and the lack of anyone protecting Melody. There's no interest to shield and protect her. And I find that to be a fundamental problem with Love and Marriage Huntsville as a show. 
the question I have is, is it really a problem for a male? I have a problem with it. Is it a problem for a male herself? Because she seems to move in this situation and be okay with some of the things that are happening. I'm wondering if she's just okay with it because of the check or what is happening. But I feel like she is unprotected in this space. And I don't know why the Fletchers, if they are they are her friends, why would you do exactly what she asked you not to? So Martell, of course, stands in front of Mel and he, she's supposed to catch him and he yells, I'm the father of your children, catch me. I love the fact that he tries to lean on, the, on this I'm your kid's father, but he never thought about his kids or his family when he was out cheating. His kids or his family is something he uses as a manipulation tactic when he wants something. When Chris Fletcher comes to kick him out the house, oh, what are you going to do? Put me and my kids on the street. Knowing his kids got a place to live, they could go live with their mama, okay? He the only one who's going to be out the streets because he's moved three time, six times in three years. He also uses the kids when he wants to leverage things from Melody, but that's not what this is about. So the fact that he brought them kids up and she rolls her eyes and looks to the side, she knows he don't give a shit about that, her being his kid's father or vice versa. It's a manipulation tactic. It's classic narcissistic narcissistic behavior this is what narcissist men do the kids matter when it benefits him and he knows that is the only connection he still has to her he knows if he didn't have them kids she would never speak to him again another day in his life so he wants to pull and utilize them kids however he can to get to and get at melody so she lets him fall on the floor and rightfully so and you can clearly tell from his confessional that he's upset that she's done that because in his mind, she doesn't want people to know that they can tr that she can trust him and they communicate. Just like he was saying that, oh, Melody does not want people to know when they're not around, we talk and we're, we're good, we're best friends. No, they're not. It's a lie. It's a figment of his imagination. None of this is true. It's just what he's saying because he's trying to paint the picture that Mel is fake. She's one way with him privately and she's another way with them publicly because she doesn't want everyone to know how close they are privately. And it's a lie. It's 100% a lie. We know that because Mel's phone went live a few weeks ago and we heard exactly what happens at the game. She did exactly what she said she does. She paid him does. She does not talk to this man. She is not actively trying to have a relationship with him. She co-parents as best as she can. She's not mean and nasty and out arguing and acting a fool with him, but she just does not want any engagement with him. And I don't blame her. It's no reason to have him in her life because he was nothing when she was married to him. It benefits him to have a relationship with Melody Rogers. It does not benefit Melody to have a relationship with Martell in any way, shape, or form. He is of no value to her anymore. And that's what he has a problem with. He knows he has no end. And he's trying to create chaos because the last thing he can possibly do is turn some friends against her or use her children against her. Those are his last two options. And he's trying desperately to make one of those two things happen. So Kiki comes in and I'ma just tell you, I'ma just say this, and I felt this way since Kiki has been on this show. I think Kiki's time on this show has been extremely difficult and unfair. I feel like I can completely understand her feeling left out and alone, oftentimes in scenes. Maurice and Kimmy's home. I can see how she felt disrespected and how she felt ignored and like an outcast. It's almost like the circle is saying you don't belong, but they, you know, but she's there. They're not making room for her. And it's because the Scots are for people and they, they are always going to have the vote. And that four, that four vote that is always sticking together will always outnumber everybody else. So it's not a fair situation for her to walk into. Um, but coming into this situation here, I don't know who orchestrated this. I would think production did it, but it was completely unfair. And by the end of this, when they're going through the counseling session, 
I understand her being completely shut down at the end when they did the extra scene because this day would be too much for anybody, right? Who wants to go through this and be treated like this by people who are supposed to be your friends and family? It's really, it's it's tough to watch. I think it's just so foul how they treat this woman. You have a man sitting in there that has been abusive to his wife. He's been abusive to some of them. He yells and screams at people. He did a revenge pee on his wife. He's had to be held back from literally attacking his wife by, by Marceau one episode when they went into Vegas. Okay? They literally had to hold him back. Kiki threw some water on her cousin. And we got this whole big ordeal about Kiki throwing water. But Nell and Chris let Martell come there. And everybody knows what he did to Melody. This is not about him cheating on Melody in a relationship. This is about a illegal act that he did against his wife. And there are challenges. She has accused him of committing revenge P against her. He has admitted this on Queen Sheba. His mistress and side slug thought admitted it on Original Straight with No Chaser when she released those, those tapes. So you have admissions by both Arion and Martell that they did this. These people know that. And he's standing there, but they giving Kiki all this mess about throwing some water on Tisha. And I don't care what nobody says. I don't care that she threw the water on Tisha. I, I don't care. And it is it does not call for all this, in my opinion. Nell sitting here about to cry. Because Tisha's mad because her cousin's there who threw some water on her. Kiki, since the time she's come on this show, they've treated her like she's less than. When you have four people of the same family, the Scots, who can always team up on somebody else, that is a lot of bullying. They play off of each other. Kimmy immediately grabs Maurice's arm like she's some damn damsel in distress when Kiki comes in. And when she apologizes to them for disrupting their household, essentially what they said was, we'll accept your apology, but too little, too late. You should apologize sooner. And it's people like that where you like, mm, yeah, I came in your house and threw a drink and what? That's how, that's how that energy gets like that. That's how it gets like that. Because you get sick of people like Kimmy and Maurice trying to pretend they're better than what all of us know. These people ain't none of that. They don't even have a reason to walk around with the smugness that they do. We know they business that they don't want on this show. We know why they use Monster as a storyline and why they now talking about their sex life. It is a distraction from discussing what's going on with them for real, for real. They fronting. But it's okay to put Kiki and all her mess in the street because it's a distraction. She apologized and anybody in their right mind would have been like, I, girl, it, you know, I, I know don't come to my house doing that again, but I understand I accept your apology and you move on. It was a drink. She did not clock her. It was not police presence at their house where they pulling people out the house. You know, no police were called. It was not even that big of a deal, but they want to make it like it's this big situation and now and the tears in her eyes I can't why is Martell there and no one has asked was Melody okay or did she feel safe with Martell in her presence but we asking Kiki this about throwing a drink on Tisha who everyone knows is an antagonist and on some days Keisha bowed about it is she ready to go on other days Tisha act like she can't open her mouth and Marceau has to speak for her and this day is the latter all she does is go off says she accepts her apology she walks out the room goes in the kitchen goes to crying and then marceau kicks in like he always does and she allows marceau to shape her thought and her reaction and how she's going to move and then she gets in line marceau always hopping into situations and speaking on her behalf when she's in a crisis moment is because he is dictating how she moves and nobody has respect for that as a woman, you should be able to decide how you're going to deal with your cousin yourself. This is not a traumatic event that has happened to her. The tears are unnecessary. It's ridiculous. It was water. I don't know why Nell is crying because let's get this straight. Nell had ample opportunity to clear this up. They're all staying at the same house. So when Kiki called her, she could have pulled together a quick team meeting and say, hey, 
She should have said, Kiki, I'm going to call you right back. She could have pulled together a quick house meeting. Kiki is wanting to come in. How do you all feel about it? If they had decided at that moment that Kiki could not come, she could have called Kiki, said the house decided they didn't want you to come. I apologize. We'll get together when I get back. And that would have saved Kiki the embarrassment of walking in this house and being treated this way. That's the appropriate way to handle this situation. If, in fact, it was really Nell's decision. If it was production's decision, which is my, that production set this up. I believe they paid for Kiki's ticket. I believe that Nell and Chris knew Kiki was coming. I believe that all that was set up. And I believe this is for another moment at Kiki's expense. And she's willing to take these hits because she wants to be on the show. She probably doesn't have an amazing source of income coming in right now. She needs the money. And this is what she's doing to be on the show. And that's not cool. It's not cool at all. So Nell says that Mel told Kiki to call her. They do a flashback where Mel is talking to Kiki. And she says, I'm going on, we're going on a trip. Nell brought everybody together. We're going to go to Houston. Kiki says, I want to go. Mel said, you should probably call and talk to Nell. That is the end of Mel's involvement in any of this, period. Because when Kiki called Nell to ask her if she could go and Nell said, yeah, Kiki never called Mel and told her I'm on my way. And Nell never went in to Mel and said, Kiki called and she's on her way. So Melody's involvement in this ended two weeks ago, the last time she talked to Kiki. She is not actively involved in Kiki coming or the decision to allow her to come. She did not care either way. She told Kiki, deal with Nell on it. And that's what Kiki did. None of them ever closed that loop with Mel and circled back to tell her what was going on. So to say Mel had any involvement in it was not right. But that's the way that it was presented when Nell said what happened. So of course, who does Tisha and Marceau focus on? Oh, this is all Mel's doing. When it wasn't Mel's doing at all. And they tried to approach the scene as in, Oh, we're so glad Mel wasn't being messy. When the people who are messy in these situations are Tisha and Marceau, those are the manipulators. These are the people who everyone's catering to. And I'm wondering why. Why is there a value placed on Tisha and Marceau when they bring no value to this show whatsoever? Tisha is somebody no one needs to see. I don't need to see Tisha and Marceau. I don't need to see Kimmy and Maurice. They're just basically extras in scenes. But this whole situation is catered around Tisha and how she feels. And I don't get that. I don't see why Tisha is so highly valued in this scene when she should not be. She apologized. Tisha shakes her head and says she accepts her apology. Then here comes Marceau kicking in and trying to make this about Melody. And it was not about Melody. So Tisha goes out and Neil goes out after him and uh, Chris goes out and Chris was like, well, y'all okay? And Tisha says, you know, she felt blindsided and she's crying. And Marceau says, you know, Tisha needs to talk to Nell. And Nell comes in crying and Tisha crying, talking about she felt portrayed. I'm like, girl, portrayed. And she said it twice, y'all. She felt portrayed. But anyway, Mel starts backpedaling and saying that, you know, she didn't really want to invite her. And Chris and her been fussing about it all day. And she basically, Tisha says, Mel understands our relationship. So in Tisha's mind, this is all about Mel. And this is what Marceau and Tisha do. They they create issues and, and, and problems with Mel because this girl, Tisha, is so jealous of Mel. She's fixated on her. Martel is fixated on her. I just don't, I wouldn't want to be around people like that. This whole situation, she's not so much concerned about Kiki or Nell, she focuses on Mel should have known better. Mel did this, Mel, 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 when Mel has nothing to do with this. Nothing. So they come back in the room and Marceau is, Nell is telling the group that Kiki can't stay and Stormy's like, she could stay at the hotel with us then. And Kiki's like, I'm not going to let them dictate where I can and cannot go. And I absolutely 100% agree with that. Who the hell is Tisha and Marceau to say whether or not this castmate can be on a, a trip for the cast? 
they acting like it's they got some seniority and they can they got some pull like that. And I I don't understand how they're being allowed to move like this. So Marceau saying to Mel, just like you told me we was getting one side of a story, and you know when we was talking about building our friendship. And he was like, Mel is telling them, I did not know Kiki was coming. Tisha's not even looking at Mel because she's already having her fit. When Marceau's talking to Mel, Martel's like, what you mean? What are you talking about? When you get one side of what story is that pertaining to me? And Marceau says, yes. Martel, Martel comes over and put his hand on Marceau's shoulder to turn him around to make him talk to him. And Maurice grabs Martel's shoulder and pulls him back. So once again, we back to the same dynamic that happened outside of Destiny's store. These two Scott brothers on Martel against Martel. That's what it always is. It's okay when they flex on people or Martel flexes on somebody, but when a woman does it, everybody's in tears and the whole show gotta stop. I agree. I think that Martel is aggressive. I don't think Martel should have a right to put his hands on Marceau or Maurice put his hands on Martel. They're putting hands on each other, moving each other around. They had a whole brawl outside of Destiny show. It was not one time that these castmates sit down and talked about putting nobody out of a scene after that brawl. Not one time. And all of them, all three of them men that's acting a fool right now was also brawling outside of that store. But a woman throws a woman throws some water and you got this whole catastrophe. Bull. This is bull. They playing in our faces. So this hothead, Martel, goes in again. He he slaps <laughs> Marceau's hand. Boom. Slaps his hand. Just like that. In his personal space and slaps his hand. That is what you call assault. Where's the conversation about removing Martel from the show? The fact that Maurice keeps jumping in to fights between Marceau and Martel and putting his hands on Martel and nobody's addressing that, that's a problem. That's two on one, constantly. Because we all know if given the opportunity for Martel to beat Marceau's ass, he would do it. But you always got Maurice over there and these Scots is tag teaming. This is why I say they need to get off this daggone show. It is, nobody wants to see the Scots show. Nobody wants to see that. Kimmy and Maurice don't bring nothing. All they want to do is sit up and act like they some type of royalty couple and they not. Kimmy was clearly a side chick. She gives side chicks the all day long. All day long. She's sitting up here defending Martel. All the, every time, every opportunity, she defending Martel. She is just ridiculous. And nobody wants to look at that. She's a sad excuse for what a woman in today's world should be representing when you're dealing with men like that. Her and Tisha are nothing short of damn doormats. And Marceau being exactly who Marceau is, he knows what to say to just get right up under Martel's skin. Only two of us in this room know what I'm talking about. And you talking to the wrong person, you can go get it straight out the Roger's mouth. That says to Martel, this man is getting an opportunity to do something with my ex-wife that I can't. I can't sit down and have an opportunity to talk to her. I can't build a relationship with her. I can't get her to even acknowledge me. And he's now getting tighter with, with my wife. That infuriated Martel. That is what sent Martel over the edge. And Marceau knows what he's saying. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to get in under and just get, get him enraged. He knows how to play this man. And he does it effortlessly. That is why you see this huge explosion with Martel. It's all about Mel. He can't stand the fact that Marceau and Mel are working on their relationship and they're having conversations he's not privy to and they're talking about things that he is not privy to. He does not do that with, with Melody and he wants the opportunity to build with Melody and get tight back with her and have conversations with her and he can't. He wants to sit down and be in a conversation with Mel so bad, but he can't. And that's why you see this huge explosion. Here comes Tisha because she's fixated on Mel. Marceau, did you ask Mel what she does? 
Now, everybody's supposed to be in here kissing Tisha's butt because she's so hurt because Kiki threw water on her. But Kiki threw water on her for exactly what she's doing right now. She's shady as hell and she always starting stuff and nobody's calling her on anything. Everybody wants to focus on Mel. So Mel walks out the room and Tisha says to Marcel, Marcel, did you ask Mel what she does? Mel did not do anything. This loser cheated on his family, destroyed it, and he lied about his wife being in a physical relationship with another man and used the video of them two in a act together, a marital act, and showed it to people as proof that the wife was cheating. And he said he was a different man that the wife was cheating with. That is the revenge P. Tisha clearly is identifying that she believes what Martell said. She believes Melody cheated on her husband. So she is aware of the situation. That's why she's asking Marceau, did you ask Mel what she did? That is imp implying that Mel cheated on him. Where did Tisha get that from? Where did she get it from? Mel ain't told her that. Where did she get that from? Destiny, Martell, who, where? So Martel goes into a screaming match with Nell with Marceau sitting there, with Courtney in that room, with Maurice in that room, with Chris in that room. And not one of these men, these men ever said to him, be quiet, don't talk to a woman like that. She's screaming, holding her own against a yelling, raging man. And not one of these punk ass men open their mouth to tell him to stop speaking to a woman like that. But that's okay to have in the house. Kiki ain't said a word to Tisha. Kiki is not rose, her, her voice was never raised. She is not pushing any aggression towards Tisha. But this is okay for Martell to do because it is okay for men to treat women like this, but another woman, how dare she throw a drink on her cousin who openly disrespect her when she walked in and tried to say hello. This is like, this is it's silliness. And it's tolerated over and over again. It's misogynistic behavior. It's weak men standing around, letting a man berate another man's wife. And the husband is standing right there. And he never once said, hey, stop yelling at my wife. Are you crazy? Martell is allowed to do this over and over and over again. It is never a conversation or a vote on whether or not Martell can go on cash trips, can be filmed in scenes. It's never an open vote where people get to decide in his face if they are for or against him. They can't put Martell through that trauma, but it's okay to disrespect and traumatize Kiki in this way. It's okay to, as a group to say to her, you're not good enough, but they've never told Martell, your behavior makes you not good enough to be in our circle. No one's ever held this man accountable in that way. Never once. And now they're screaming and yelling and chaos. And it's all about this man still lying, saying, Melody cheated on me more than once. I ain't saying, I ain't asking y'all to choose. That's exactly what he asked Nell and Chris Fletcher to do when they were sitting on the steps at Chris Fletcher's house and he did this same thing with Nell before. He absolutely asked her to choose. He said Nell and Chris should choose. They should not go to Melody's name change ceremony because they should be on his side. That is exactly what he asked him to do. And he has also said Melody has cheated on him several times. And that story works for these idiots until Melody is there and starts to break down what happened with dates and explanations. And when he's asked who did she cheat with and how does he know, he has no answer for that. He is assuming that she cheated because she left the house and got away from him and took some time to herself and went to a hotel. And he's saying she cheated once she left him, moved out of their marital home and was speaking with lawyers about a divorce. He believes during that time, she still should not have slept with nobody and she should have remained faithful to a man who was nothing short of a prostitute during their whole marriage. He was a bona fide hoe putting his little nasty thing up in everybody and their mama, spreading diseases, making outside babies. 
that and everything in Huntsville put their mouth on him. And you think she's supposed to th- sit there and let you bring all that nasty infections, disease, all that back to her? No. She was not waiting on you. She left you, which gives her the right to see anyone she wants. You were not in a marital relationship. She moved out of the home. That is not the same as you cheating while you're in her home and your side piece calling your phone while you're driving to Atlanta after you were supposed to change your number and you all were back in a marriage and a union. Totally different. And then come here come Tisha talking to Kimmy. He's Martel's position is everybody keeps coming to him about what he's done, but nobody's ever held male accountable for anything. No, that's not his point. That's your point, Tisha. So stop being this old whack shady chick that you are who get water thrown on you and you don't do nothing, but every other day you ready to throw some hands. She comes over there talking to Kimmy and here come these two pick Misha throwing in their little male defenses. And this is why I can't stand these chicks. Instead of her going to Mel and saying that's how she feels, how she feels about Mel, she decides to jump in and tag onto what Martell's doing because she's mad at Mel. And her little dumb self can't articulate how she feels. She is a, she's an ineffective communicator. And so therefore now she's going over here trying to talk to Kimmy to skew, bring Kimmy in on what position they gonna take. So Nell asks her again, did she cheat on Martell? And she tells her, the only time I was with somebody else is when I left Martell and I never went back, period. He gonna say, y'all get it? So he's talking to production to see if they have her response on camera. When he says, did y'all get it? He's talking about to the producers, the camera people, did you film her, ask her if she cheated on camera? Do you see how sick and and warped this whole thing is? So when Carlos King does a video laughing, talking about he loves Mel and all this, I can't tell when you letting this man control what y'all feeling, what y'all talking about. He gets to act a damn fool on all the scenes, but the woman who threw the glass of water is ostracized and he gets to act a fool, touch people, push on people, smack hands, and nobody gets to vote whether or not he stays in the house after he's aggressively attacked people verbally and physically and committed revenge pee against his wife. You, I can't make this up. I can't make it up. This is why people can't stand you, Carlos. When you talking about, oh, I don't know why the melameters hate me, this is why. Then he talking about Nell coming for him and hurting him. Martell is a very sick and twisted and pathetic man. He looks like shit. The inside of his eyes are pitch black. Like this man can't sleep an ounce. Like, ugh, why don't y'all give this? If coleslaw is a side, then this is mashed potatoes. I can't. This is, he is just so sick and twisted and everything is about him and the victimization of it all. Three years, and this man cannot admit to any wrongdoing. He will take no accountability for nothing. And everybody wants to pretend he's grown. He is not grown at all. And that's why he can't get nothing, ain't nothing working for him. People want to know how Mel even dealt with him. How did she even deal with him? And folks are shocked that he's with Ariane, but I'm not. They are one in the same people. This this man is nothing. He is no way near what they presented him to be when this show started. He was acting. This is the bottom of the barrel, the sticky stuff at the bottom. That's who him and Coleslaw are. And she makes him feel like a man because he is so damn low. He has to get with somebody like her to feel valuable. He has to. He and Mel were never equally yoked ever. The male goes off into the corner saying she can't deal with the victimization and she go over there and start eating. She start eating. So Melody says she discovered him cheating October 2017. She finds out he's been cheating on her for two years. So this fool, Martel decides he's going to accuse Mel of cheating in front of the... So glad he did because this is what he looks like when his feet are held to the fire. The whole bullshit story crumbles right there. Mel walks up, excuse me, 
I cheated on you with who, with what, when. He never can answer those questions because he's lying. So Mel lays it out. March of 2017, I found out he had been cheating for two years. October, I catch him at a homecoming game for a and in the car with Arion. I decide I'm done. I move out in December. I get my own apartment. She's meeting with attorneys about divorcing him. They get the Love and Marriage Huntsville show. Now, this is me adding to this because these this is what these dates are. But in April of 2018, she decides to get... Mel comes over. March 2017, I found out he's cheating. He had been cheating for two years with who is what we know now to be Ariane. She catches him in, the, in a car outside of homecoming in October 2017 with Ariane in the car. He's still fooling around with her. She moves out of the house in December of 2017, gets her own place. So he's talking about she was cheating on him after she left him because she dated someone else after she left him and was actively speaking with attorneys about divorcing him. That is not cheating. If you've made the decision to leave your your husband, y'all in two separate homes and you're meeting with divorce lawyers, that in my opinion is not cheating. You're not together. And she had every right to do whatever the hell she wanted to do because this nigga had been hunching on that piece of throw up for two years at this point. April 2018, they decide to get back together. So whatever they're doing as separate individuals, when you decide to come back together, it needs to stop. And we all know he never stopped. So there was no cheating on Mel's part. And his story falls apart. He couldn't name a person. He could not say anything other than her behavior changed. And he's associating that change in behavior with another man that she's screwing because that's what he's done. He screws other people and his changes in behavior are due to the fact that he's involved with other women. He is projecting. But to assume because she wants to leave the house and go get time for herself because she's dealing with you cheating with another person or she's dealing with your abusive behavior, that does not, you have to say, who did she cheat with? We know who you cheated with. Who did she cheat with? When, where did you see him? How did you find out? What was the instance? She's calling things out. He's giving assumptions. And his whole story falls apart because he's been lying this whole time. He lied. He assumed she cheated because he was doing it. Now, if you think about Martel and the women in his life and the people he surrounds himself with, when he gives this story about Melody cheating too, he ain't going to get nothing but, mm mm-hmm, yes, that's Miss Marlene, that's his mother, and Coleslaw's going to agree with it because she wants him to keep this thought in his mind because that's how he justifies what happened in his relationship because if ever Martell truly allows himself to understand that he did this to himself and there was no flaw on her part with her cheating there was no problem with her sexually the problem was no woman wants to screw you when she know you out screwing other people because you're depositing those germs in her body if he ever allows himself to clearly see his wrongdoing He knows he can't live with himself. That is why he does that. That's why he says that he does not want to face the fact that he single-handedly destroyed his blessing. Coleslaw reinforces his beliefs. His mother does. Pygmisha's like Kimmy and Tisha will say, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. I get it. Yep, I get it. Kimmy spends time on camera saying nothing. Oh, who did what first? Who did what that? That same scenario works for her when it comes to Kiowa. She knows she cheated with Maurice. She know that Marceau, Martel knows that she was a side piece to Maurice. So she don't want to delve into this topic too much because they don't want that backlash to follow them. Kimmy is the same as Ariane. She don't want to go down that road, but she wants to act like, oh, well, if Mel did it and Martel did it, they're equally wrong. Because that fits her story. That helps her look herself in the mirror. But Martel needs to get away from yes people and people who are afraid of him yelling and screaming. And in this moment, I am appreciative of Stormy because Stormy is telling him, no, that's not cheating. If she thought y'all were done, that's not cheating. And she's calling him on his stuff. And he does not like it, but she's calling him on it. And he can't attack her like he was attacking Miss Nell because he believes in his mind Courtney will do something. I'm not so sure about that. I don't think Courtney's about that life, to be perfectly honest. 
everybody gives Courtney a lot of, oh yeah, Courtney would do this, Courtney would do that. I ain't seen Courtney do nothing. One of them should have stopped Martell from sitting there screaming a nail, but they didn't. But in this moment that Stormy is holding Martell accountable, he's, his story's breaking down. And then he goes, well, well, she wasn't pleasing me. Don't nobody care nothing about pleasing you when you're cheating on them. Your mental, emotional, physical connection is broken. The last thing on somebody's mind when you're cheating on them is pleasing you sexually. They don't care about that. You've harmed them in a way where you, their body is shut down to you. They're not open to you. Opening their legs and taking you in in that way could literally kill them. That's just how out there this man was. He was raw up in these people. And everyone's seen Ariane. Nobody wants to share fluids with her, period. The whole idea of sharing fluids with that woman will make me pass the hell out. It's a no. Basically, this scene concludes with Chris saying that they're going to go horseback riding. And there is pretty much no resolution to any of the problems that are that is done. I don't think this means that Martell is going to finally understand or come to the conclusion that he is the sole purpose of the reason his marriage failed. Now, when they get to the space where they're going to ride the horses, everyone picks out their horse and they basically uh, begin to ride. But when they pull up, I notice that Kiki pulls up in a, a vehicle that's separate from everyone else. Again, just constantly keeping her outside of the circle. Um, but they go on their horseback ride. While everyone's doing that, Kimmy stays back and she's talking to the therapist. Now, in my opinion, I feel like Kimmy prime this therapist for some of the things that were going on I believe production did not show that but I think that she kind of gave her two cents in and it may have shaped how the therapist approached Kiki and the situation now apparently there's a lot more to this film they were there for a long period of time and it was cut to show us only certain portions but just from in my opinion it all goes back to Kiki <laughs> We've seen this whole scenario break out. Literally, Kiki comes in, she apologizes, Tisha walks off, Tisha decides, you know, she's still upset, but there's not another peep from Kiki. Kiki apologized, and there was not another peep from Kiki the whole time. Martell's in the house screaming, yelling, cussing, and fussing, but the scene we get is the therapist addressing Kiki. The therapist addressing Kiki how Kiki's presence has impacted the group. When what we watched was Martell's presence impact the group. And so again, I feel like Kiki was scapegoated. This show was cut and edited in a way to make this about Kiki when it really should have been about the behavioral problems with Martell and Martell himself and his aggressive behavior. Kiki, yes, you can address her throwing water a month ago. And that can, Tisha does not have to accept her apology. Neither does Kimmy and Maurice. As, T, as Kiki said, that's fine. But where are we addressing Martell? Where are we addressing what he's done to Melody? Where are we addressing Revenge P? But the therapist has time to clock in on Kiki and I understand Kiki shutting down and not receiving that information I understand her behavior in the extended clip none of this makes sense none of it makes sense what it says is a man can behave any way he wants he can be disrespectful he can be aggressive he can touch you he can hit your hand he can scream and yell at you. He's fine. The problem is the woman who threw water a month ago. Because let's be clear. Kiki is not a problem in this moment. Martell was. The therapy session is about what's happening to the group right now. But Martell's not addressed. This is bullshit. <laughs> it is bullshit. 100 grand. It's bullshit. And that's essentially what I thought of this episode. I always like to see when Melody gets to um, 
point out Martel's lies. I find those conversations to be necessary even today and very genuine. I find the conversation between Kiki and Tisha to be genuine. What I don't find genuine is the Scots and Martel. I think Stormy in this episode was 100% right to stand and tell Martel no. I'm so happy she did that because you don't get that from Tisha and Kimmy. Um, Overall, the episode to me was about a seven or eight. Um, But I still continuously watch how the Scots are manipulating what we see and what we focus on. Kimmy standing back and walking with that therapist was problematic for me because her she put her opinion into the therapist and she shaped likely what the therapist was going to address. And that means she put it on Kiki. When really what should have been addressed was Martell and his behavior throughout the day. And I did not see Nell mention that. I believe she probably did discuss Martell and his behavior, but the therapist didn't address it. So in the event that you are calling people to have therapy and you have a therapist addressing a group of people, that therapist needs to address the situation with a clear understanding of the dynamics in the group, Um, not make it about one person. And when that happens, production needs to show the therapist conversation about all the issues in the group it should not be one-sided but again it's beginning to feel like Kiki is just going to be scapegoated and that's not cool this man Martel Holt is not being held accountable for his behavior his conduct his actions his his criminal acts nothing He's being held accountable for nothing. And eventually, this will catch up with Carlos King and this production. It's going to catch up with them. Because you cannot continuously let people like this go unchecked. You can't. Kiki should have came on this show. She should have focused on her sobriety. She should have let Tisha stay where Tisha was and not focus so much on that relationship. She, it's a misstep. Most people who come on this show, it's a misstep. I don't know if they're pushed in that, in the wrong direction or what happens, but they don't, they do not take this opportunity and, and approach it appropriately. Tisha should have never been her focus. Her focus should have been rebuilding her life, sharing about her, um, you know, her experience with her spouse going through addiction, what it did to their relationship and how they are working to get back to where they need to be. She could have took a totally different approach to this and the world would have been open to that. Opioid addiction is something that is huge right now in this country the world would have received that and we would have been open to that. She focused on them Scots and when you focus on one Scott or you fighting with four, it's always going to be four against one and that's just not something you should pitch yourself up against. They pull on other people for energy in a storyline. They play off of that. They manipulate other people so they can be relevant but they are able to hide their hand. And the only way that they're going to continue to be exposed is for people not to allow them to play them like that. So hopefully Stormy and Kiki will learn that lesson so that these Scots can go on and move about their business. I'm 100% for the Scots and Martell off the show, period. It's no reason for them to exist on this show anymore. It's just not. So tell me what y'all think. Do you think, you know, I'm off? I mean, because quite frankly, this whole show was basically (laughs) a flip of the script. There was a person in the problem in the house. There was somebody who changed the dynamics in the house. 
And it damn sure wasn't Kiki. Kiki came in and apologized. And for the most part, we watched everybody accept her apology. All Tisha did was walk out the room. The explosion was Martell. That was it. So, drop me some comments. Let me know what y'all think about this. Um, Do you think there will ever come a time where they're going to hold Martell accountable? Period. You know, he's at this point asked to be off the show (laughs) and steal crickets from Carlos. You know? Um, What do you think is going to happen at the reunion do you think he's going to continue to explode and demonstrate bad behavior and will there be punishment for that so drop me some comments like the video share the video subscribe to the channel and i will talk to you guys soon i owe you a review of this saturday's episode and i will have that to you by thursday have a good day Get out the way. Who got a watch? Who got the time? I'm raising the clock. Even if my feelings grind, don't stop. Got big dreams.